Well, space friends, this is a video I've been very hesitant to make. I don't like to get involved in rumor or controversy, especially when it has to do with other people who are going through rough times. But I'm going on ahead anyway because I think it's important. It's important for the game of EVE Online, for all the communities that thrive within it, and it also relates to all gaming communities throughout the internet. This covers important issues such as respect for others, taking responsibility for yourself and the community you're in, and stewardship of the places where you like to connect with others. When I first started playing EVE, I saw the endless potential of anything happening for players in this game. I knew it was possible to become a powerful space nerd in some respect or another, perhaps as an industry mogul, information broker, notorious thief or scammer, or even righteous leader fighting for some just cause even in a roleplay type scenario. In EVE there are unique opportunities to practice the use of many different social archetypes, anything from friendly or honorable industrialist that takes care of their friends and business partners to a powerful warlord or space empire dictator in command of thousands of other players, fighting for space, influence, or farming the misfortune of the more defenseless players. Things such as thievery, scams, spying, privacy, diplomatic backstabbing, this is all part of the game. A lot of people who don't understand EVE will whine and complain about this, but those who do understand are fully aware that this is part of the game and you are free to commit these acts or have such acts committed against you as all fair play. Unfortunately, many people misunderstand this gameplay as a free pass to be truly abusive and toxic to other people. I'm not talking about just in-game, but abuse of people that includes harassment, hate speech, personal attacks, and threats that can extend into real life outside of the game. And this is not what the creators of the game ever intended nor do they ultimately tolerate it according to the EULA. Now in the past especially, EVE attracted a lot of these toxic personalities from the dark corners of the internet. Perhaps a certain someone is an example of one of those people, but we're talking about someone who is kind of fascinating to me and became the leader of this alliance after what was truly a genius subversion campaign that took down Band of Brothers, which was the most powerful alliance in the game at that time. Since then, he became the leader of Goon Swarm, an alliance in EVE, tens of thousands of players strong, and one that has remained somewhere in the top three most powerful alliances in the game for over 10 years. That someone is the Mitanni, and the Mitanni has been dethroned, ousted, kicked from leadership, in shame and disgrace. Now before I get to what I think may have happened here, let me give you some more background. When I was a new player, understanding that EVE caters to grand ambitions, I was curious who the most influential space warlord in the game was, and I eventually found out about the goons and their big kahuna, the Matani. A case can be made that this person has been the face of what a space nerd with real power is. To give you a rough overview, here's a clip of the Matani speaking about his nature in the game at EVE FanFest 2009. Oops bring happiness and love to as many people. I care very deeply about the player base of the game, and one of the things that I try to do as much as possible is try to bring, uh, I, I would say, a sense of honor and justice to, to the galaxy, because um, I, I like to role play a lot. Okay, no, actually, I, I can't. You know, D D Darius did this, uh, my former CEO in Goodfleet did this with a straight face when he was uh, coked up on all sorts of stuff and giving his alliance presentation. Of course, not that we actually know he was coked up on all sorts of stuff, but I can't lie too much with a straight face for too long. I, uh, I, I do some spy stuff, I disband alliances, I wreak havoc, and I have no official capacity within Goonfleet, and uh, that's what I do. I also like to talk about myself. <laughs> Now someone who might be the opposite of the Mitanni, which has just as much influence on the player base, would be someone like Kriba, a mining mogul. You might call Kriba the king of Care Bears, not someone who loves the limelight but helped to elevate the game of EVE in the most altruistic ways. But if you think about it this way, if you're a huge alliance and you need to order hundreds of capital ships, you might need to find a broker you can trust and everyone trusted Kriba. Now the Matani is certainly no Kriba. Matani certainly had no shame in belittling others. He could wrap himself in the defensive blanket that, well, it's just a game. He's only role-playing a character attacking your character. 
But often these lines between roleplay and real harassment would blur a little bit. I'm reminded of Matani's jaw-dropping incident at Eve FanFest 2012. Eve FanFest is the festival where lots of bigwigs from the Eve player base, developers, and many others make speeches, presentations, and generally party it up in Reykjavik, Iceland. Did I say that right? Reykjavik. Uh, where CCP Games is based. Although Matani was clearly drunk, he made fun of a player who got his little mining operation ganked by some goons, who also proceeded to trick him into paying for a protection pass, and you can imagine the end result of this as well. Of course, this is all fair play in, in EVE, but this player sent a message about the sad state of his real life with all kinds of depressing details and generally giving the impression that this person may have been suicidal to anyone with any shred of empathy. Mitani shares this around to thousands of people on stage as if it were the most hilarious thing in the world, ending it by telling everyone, if you find this guy in space, maybe you can make him kill himself. Now, no matter whether Mitani was banned for a while, which of course he was, or he gave this player all his isk, which of course he claims he did, no matter how drunk he was, there was a PowerPoint presentation that was planned with slides, and there is just no coming back from this revealing moment. My overall impression of the Mitani and people like him boils down to a high school scenario, which is the following. There is this nerd, right? A likable one, but one that perhaps was bullied in his freshman year of high school. The nerd comes back the following year, kind of hardened up. He's too scrawny to fight off the bully or bullies directly, so he gets dirt on said bully. Whether the dirt is fabricated or real doesn't really matter. He uses that dirt to humiliate the bully, and eventually hundreds of others at the school are laughing and verbally abusing that bully. The intelligent nerd, with his following, then becomes the real bully. A psychological bully and with his wit and charm has become one of the most popular kids in school that no one will screw with and everyone wants to be friends with. The culture of the school kind of becomes one of humiliation for certain people and the nerd stays the same since this has become his security blanket that works so well for him so long while eventually everyone else seems to have kind of grown up. Perhaps in college this nerd is no longer anything special and his antics and behavior of many who follow him is no longer tolerated. And this leads us to what happened recently. All the podcasts have been very vague, deliberately so, about what exactly went down. I did some digging and, believe me, it led me down some pretty dark roads. It had to do with sexual harassment within goons and a lazy, along with belittling attitude about addressing these problems. Given the Matani's forceful nature, no doubt he wasn't helpful, and due to real life events and the internal pressure from others within Goons, the Matani had to step down from his leadership role in Goon Swarm. After doing my digging, I totally understand why no one is getting into the nitty gritty details. The new leaders of Goons and their allies just simply want to move on, and I do not blame them. Now, without Matani as the face and voice of Goon Swarm, the reputation of Goons often admired and just as often hated, may change entirely. Now I'll admit I'm not some kind of unbiased journalist here. I always found the blind loyalty to any one person within EVE or anywhere else as kind of stupid, and large nullsec alliances such as goons to me are plagued with groupthink. However, when it comes to goons, who still has an amazingly effective leadership structure, without Matani I cannot come to see them the same way anymore. In fact, it may be that without Matani in that leadership position, it will be hard to see EVE Online itself the same way anymore. There are plenty of other trolly, colorful, and slightly nefarious personalities in EVE, but the one who had the most power for the most amount of time has officially been dethroned. Let me also say that in many ways, I have really admired and been fascinated by the Matani. I have tried to figure out what makes him so effective and in some small way envied what he can do. After all, at present, in the game itself, I am nothing of significance compared to Mitani or other leaders. I lead a very small PvP gang corporation, like less than two dozen people currently, and low sec mostly. We are recruiting, by the way. 
And I just might be a tactical genius, but I'm more clumsy than Forrest Gump at execution. So until I learn a more fluid and smooth way of thinking and acting, I am certainly not some kind of harbinger destruction in EVE PvP. <laughs> but at least this creates a lot of interesting content. And this is stuff I'll go into in other videos soon. Among us, there is uh, an atmosphere of total acceptance and cozy trust. Of course, this is nowhere near the ambitions I had when I first started in EVE, nowhere near the idea of becoming something like a Matani in my own right. But you know what? I've grown to be okay with that. For I am somewhat famous in EVE in my own little way, but not the Matani way. This goes back to the real life lesson of becoming the best of yourself. When you are the best of yourself, no one can copycat you and you stand out as the peerless master of your own path. Their overall takeaway is this. Without Mitanni, Eve's past reputation for the toxic player base is now being somewhat cleansed. Now, it cannot be denied that Eve Online is suffering somewhat from a slowdown in the player numbers lately. For the past couple of years, the developers have been focusing on a lot of behind the scenes work, industry and resource harvesting shenanigans, and a pretty good graphics update, but with nothing new as far as gameplay content for quite some time. However, I do remain optimistic about the current development plans for overhauling things such as faction warfare and the loyalty or reputation system. There are also stirrings of the EVE Online story and lore progressing. Overall, even when I take a break from EVE, I'm always thinking about EVE. EVE always challenges me. It challenges me to find new ways of achieving little funny goals and interacting with others. So that is all I have to say on this topic. If you want information about our core, please see the description below. Fly daring, space friends!